In this video, I'm going to share with you what I think is the number one mistake I see most artists making. And here's the thing, it's not their fault. They're doing this because all kinds of so-called art business experts are telling them to do it. So if you've been struggling to make a living from your art, you really need to watch this video. And if you like my content, I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. Okay. I remember when I first quit my job as a police officer in 2000 to pursue my dream of becoming a successful artist. I had no idea how to go about making a living from my art. Now, it probably should have come as no surprise that I really, really struggled for the first five years. I was barely squeaking by, making less than $20,000 per year. I mean, every month, at the end of the month, I wondered if this was going to be the time that my wife and I had the talk. I mean, the talk about me putting on a suit and tie and getting a real job. Now fast forward to now, where I've consistently earned over $200,000 per year for over a decade. And I can look back and see some things that were key to my eventual success. And there was one thing in particular, and it's very counterintuitive, and I think it had the biggest impact on my success. And to this day, I see artists being given the exact opposite advice, and that advice dooms them to never really achieving a high level of success. So what is that bad advice? It's to choose one subject, one medium, and one style, and focus on doing that. We're told that people need to identify us as the artist who does a certain type of work, and they tell us that that will make us more attractive to galleries and make it easier for them to market your work. And they'll also say that if you're all over the map, as far as subject matter, medium, and style, well, that can be very confusing to the buyers. So you should pick one thing and stick with that. And that sounds like reasonable advice. And at a certain point in your career as an artist, it might actually be true and make sense. But here's the problem. Most artists do this way too soon in their development, and it dooms them to a lifetime of struggling to make a living from their art. Now, I was actually given this advice many times by a number of well-meaning colleagues and clients early in my career. And thankfully, I did not listen to them. For a number of years, I was all over the map in terms of subject matter, medium, and style. If you walked into my booth at an art festival early in my career, you might have thought I was showing the work of a bunch of different artists. One artist friend of mine actually asked me once, only half jokingly, if I was mildly schizophrenic because every painting he saw of mine looked like it had been done by a different artist. I had many well-meaning artists and even clients telling me I'd probably have more success if I just pick one particular style, one particular subject, and stuck with that. But here's the problem with that. I just innately knew that the ultimate goal was to get to the point where I could consistently create great work with a unique voice, where I loved the process, I loved the finished work, and enough of the public loved the finished work. And I do mean loves the work, not likes the work. And I still had not accomplished that. I mean, people liked a lot of the very different paintings that I was creating, and I was still getting some pretty regular sales, but I hadn't yet found that magic voice where people really, really loved a particular subject in a particular medium, in a particular style. And somehow I just knew that I had to keep experimenting, trying different things until I found it. And thank God that I did. In the fall of 2004, I painted a 36 by 36 forest scene with the sun shining through the trees. Now, I absolutely loved the process of painting this piece. And when it was finished, I thought it was probably one of the best pieces I had ever created. Well, at my next art festival, it was just one of many different paintings in my tent. That one sold right away. But here's the great thing. The couple asked me if they could leave it with me for a while while they checked out the rest of the show. Well, over the next two hours, I could have sold that painting 20 times over. 
everyone that walked by my booth was drawn to that one particular painting and I could see the look of disappointment on their face when they saw that it had already sold. So after the festival, I focused on creating more paintings in a similar style and subject to that one. Well, I submitted two of those to a fundraising auction for the Burlington Art Centre and they both sold at the auction for over double what I was charging for that size at my shows. Well, then a local gallery owner who I'd become friends with saw some of this new work and he was also very excited by it. He convinced me to participate in the Toronto Art Expo, which was a huge indoor art festival. I was a little hesitant because it was really, really expensive, but I decided to go for it. I mean, I had been doing shows where the cost was maybe a few hundred dollars and this show was going to cost me several thousand dollars. So for the three months prior to the show, I just put my head down and painted. I arrived at the festival with a van stuffed with enough paintings in this new style to fill my booth a couple times over. And I'm so glad that I did. The show opened. I made my booth fee back in the first hour of the show. By the end of the opening night, I'd done over $15,000 in sales. I was back and forth to my van over the rest of the weekend to get more paintings and I ended up with sales of over $28,000 in that one weekend. I mean, I knew then that my life was never going to be the same. So now, at that time, that was the time to pick a subject and style and medium and stick with it. But thank God I'd not succumbed to the pressure to just pick something and stick with it before I was creating work that got the, oh my God, I love it, I have to have it reaction. And that is what I see a lot of artists doing. They end up picking what is maybe just the best or most popular of what they're painting right now. I mean, maybe people like it, maybe they have some sales, but then they spend the rest of their career trying to market that work. And here's the problem with that strategy. There are a bazillion artists out there creating work that people like. When a customer has a bunch of artists to choose from, where he or she likes all of the work, who are they going to choose? The one with the lowest price. But when a client sees a painting that they absolutely just love, 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 when they feel they have to have it and can't live without it, the only question they ask themselves is, can they afford it? They don't have the option of buying a cheaper option that satisfies that same desire of the client at a cheaper price. So my advice is don't just randomly pick a particular style of painting that you're doing now and stick with it. The chances are pretty much nil that that is going to be the best ultimate artistic voice that you could possibly develop. Keep pushing your creativity. Keep experimenting with various subjects, mediums and styles until, until the public lets you know that they capital L love what you're doing. Then the only question you have to ask yourself is if you love the process and you love the finished work. And if the answer is yes, well then and only then do you focus on that one thing? Now, while you're doing this, your work is going to be all over the map, and that is fine. And yes, you might not sell as much right now, and yes, it might be confusing to the public, and yes, commercial galleries will probably not be interested in you at this stage. But once you find that voice, the world will be the path to your door. And until you find that voice, you will continue to struggle to sell your work. If you pick something now that's maybe the thing that you do best right now, and then just do that, you might sell a little bit more of your work right now, but you will struggle to sell your work for the rest of your life. You only want to pick that one thing and stick with it once you are having that over the top reaction for the public. And again, I do mean over the top. Once you start creating work with a unique voice, the public will not be shy about letting you know. I went from making around $20,000 a year to selling $28,000 in a single festival. Within a couple of years, I was making over $100,000 per year and then $200,000. 
One of my students, Emily Valentine, has had the same sort of success, experiencing three sellout shows in a row once she first started showing her distinctive still life paintings. That's the kind of reaction you need to have to be successful. If you're not having that reaction to any of your work, why on earth would you want to pick one and stick with that? The right course is to keep searching for what will be that unique voice of yours that creates the over-the-top reaction for the public. Do not stop. Do not settle on a particular style, subject, or medium until you're getting that reaction from the public. Now, if you buy into this whole process, I guess the big question is how do you go about finding your own unique voice as an artist? Well, if you want my answer to that question, you can watch this next video where I explain exactly how I was able to do that and I give you a system and strategy to do that yourself.